developing edifex you want to start oh, i let you start okay Marcus. so in the very beginning it was a a huge challenge to be honest because um, we were an international team uh, we didn't know each other there's a lot of cultural difference between france and germany you wouldn't expect we we didn't know a lot of technical constraints and things like that on one side and we didn't know the solutions for those constraints and on the other side we had to basically educate at us yeah. each other um, how we work so understand each other and then we went into the first review and basically in the very first review it became very clear that it is a very technical challenge maybe you want to comment yeah, yes. a little bit on this review yes uh, we discovered that it was both a technical challenge uh, and a cultural challenge also because teams are very different between uh, germany and france clearly on the way to develop and uh, to progress in the development and also from the cultural point of view on how to take decisions also. It's good that we have good relationship together because sometimes you have to manage the, the difference between the two teams. Definitely. And basically in this review, they told us that we are very short in time. We have basically a lot of constraints in terms of budgets. They basically were asking the question whether we will be able to make it. And that was basically the first crisis and crisis helped to grow together. The second biggest, uh, bigger crisis, I think that was the point in time where really the, the borders between the teams started to disappear. So it became a truly integrated um, Edifix team. And from that point in time, whenever we had a problem, we solved it together. Yeah. We have been working for years under pressure. It's right. No time, no time to develop, not enough mass budget, not enough power. Everything was constrained. Right? Finally, we are there and we have done the delivery and we are the first to be integrated, I think. So. Yes, we did the challenge together. It's really together, the two teams together. The same relation with the system and the lover as well. Mm -hmm. So we had many interfaces between system and the lover. When we start, we can go each other to have the face-to-face -face meetings. Even if there, there is a difficulty in the language, if we have the same document and the same drawings, we can uh, make many kind of the communications, but the unfortunately COVID-19 comes. So in the beginning of the uh, project, what we can do is only the remote meetings. Three are not the native English speaker. So it was the uh, uh, very troublesome in the beginning, but the both sides find a way and they finally be a bit smoother. And now we can do the face-to-face -face meeting and that's all that makes efficiency much better. So no one has ever visited Phobos before. How much more challenging did that make the design for Edifex as a designated first penguin, the first spacecraft ever to land on the moon's surface? It's right that it's the main challenge to do a rover that will go somewhere where nobody has been before. We have to be compatible with many different kinds of ground, of regolith and so on and we have to make some hypotheses. And of course, it's exploration, we're taking some risk. Completely, I completely agree. We, we have to do a design based on many, many assumptions, meaning that it had to be iterative. And it was very helpful to have the JAXA team that helped a lot with discussing those assumptions. We had to improve the assumptions, we had to improve the constraints, and it was very helpful to have JAXA some personnel that helped us to clarify the ideas um, that we have of what to expect on the on the Phobos surface. And nowadays we have a feeling that we already know Phobos, kind of. Yes, yes. <laughs> we are much more confident. Yes, it's things to be demonstrated with the landing. So that is the same for the uh, landing as well. How the, the surface is soft or hard, or the temperature is, yeah, this is the first time to go to Phobos. So we have to assume wide range yeah, of those parameters. So that is a risky for the landing. So that is the reason why we put the rover first to the, uh, find the how soft it, the surface is or to make our landing to be safe. Yeah, of course, the scientific observation of the uh, rover is very important, but also it has the very important role of scouting the surface of Hobos prior to our landing. Yes, well, clearly it's good for the mission. Mm -hmm. And we completely assume this risk of being this good. 
the first penguin on Phobos. How was the decision to board Edifex on MMX made? Is it a continuation of the past collaboration with Hayabusa 2 sample return mission? Oh, it looks like in the end, it looks similar to Hayabusa 2, but the beginning is not the same. Our MMX mission be a very important mission to Phobos, so we ask for the many other agencies as well uh, to the how about join us with your contributions. And then the CNES and then the DR, they are kindly propose to provide and load their rover. In the beginning, there was the, uh, the small rover with 10 kilograms of mass, but the uh, independent for each agencies. It, it was a very the, uh, nice the proposal for us. The, uh, we can enhance the value of the mission, but on the other hand, separate the two, the probes, and then operate each other with the spacecraft itself was the, uh, too much to enhance the compl complexity of the mission. Originally, it is a very complex, the landing and the sampling and so on. So the, uh, we asked the both the uh, agencies uh, to how about they provide us one big rover we jointly developed. The, what we can do by 10 kilogram rover is different from this 30 kilogram rover. But the, uh, we know that it is difficult to get together two originally different proposal with the uh, different agency from different nation. But in the end, the, uh, the CNES and then DLR kindly they accept our offer and then provide us the bigger, the uh, and then more capable rover. And then that makes possible that we can operate this rover for about three months. That is much longer, longer than the Hayabusa 2 mascot. We have to overcome the big hurdle, but in the end, we get the very great mission. I am very glad you made that decision. Mm. It enabled this French-German collaboration, yes. which was great fun. We had to share also the definition of the rover. Yes. It's part of our job at the very beginning. You the knowledge of each agency. But I think the uh, different mind in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, how much it makes more difficult. Than yes. Yes. But, but then we choose to challenge, right? And then we did it. So Edifex has now been handed over to JAXA. How do you feel? feel free for me <laughs> because most of the, our problem is behind now, are behind us and also excited because we are in the new phase of the project. Now our test will be in Japan and also we are thinking on the operation. The hardware has been, has been delivered and now we are thinking to the next phase and clearly it is for both the next phase. All right. So for me, seeing the spacecraft panel, this huge spacecraft panel made me feel how much of an honor it is to be part of this mission because there's much more than the rover. It's a really complicated mission with uh, ambitious goals, very ambitious goals, many international contributions. So it's really great to be part of it. And like Stefan, I, I was delighted that the rover was accepted by JAXA Sun and Melko Sun. Um, we did our best to build the rover and obviously it was good enough. That felt really great. And of course it was a little bit sad to basically hand it over and say, okay, we spend all the time to build that ro rover. It's almost five years now, and now it's not ours anymore. But we are very convinced that um, Jackson will do the best with the rover and we to that we together will have really good results with. It. So the handover is not only the handover of the hardware, but also the hand uh, handover of the responsibility. Yes. So we, the JAXA, and then the, our contractor Melco take it very serious. So we have to keep the rover safe until the launch, and we have to verify uh, its the function as a total system with a spacecraft and the rover to be ready for the launch. That is the next stage. So we develop the spacecraft, the mission instruments, and then the other bus subsystem, the uh, each independently and then parallel. So now the uh, this is a starter. Rover is a starter, but the uh, the phase to integrate the uh, old spacecraft system, as well as many mission instruments. And then what we can see is the uh, total spacecraft system that which we usually see in this way. Uh, this is the uh, the handover of the one mission instruments, but uh, for us, this is a start of the uh, next important phase. So what do you hope Edifex will see and achieve on Phobos? We hope to see uh, many things on Phobos, in fact. How is the ground, how are the structure of the rod. We have a lot of images uh, from the orbit, thanks to the MMX spacecraft. 
but also we would like to discover new scrubs, new things, just being in situ. We will be the first to see from the ground. So we expect to see new things and interesting for the scientists. The first big achievement for all of us will be seeing where the spacecraft will land. We likely have to protect the rover um, against particles flying around and stuff like that. But of course, it would be awesome to see how the spacecraft lands and takes off, which is the bigger challenge. We already had a viewpoint from the spacecraft, that is the high altitude. But the rover, the uh, provide us the another the uh, viewpoint from the surface of the Phobos. The, we have two viewpoints. That is the, quite different from only one viewpoint. The other thing is that the uh, our the uh, observation is mostly the observed remotely from orbit, but the uh, observed the uh, the materials nearby is a different kind of science. So what we can the uh, observe in the very short range or what we can touch is only the sample we get the uh, in the end and the others thing is the either fix so the either fix the uh, plays a uh, important role of the two the important methods that we can touch to the focus so i uh, expect a lot to the either fix so we know so little about the Phobos surface, what would be the best environment, or maybe conversely, the most challenging environment that Edifex could find? So in terms of landing, it should be soft, but not super soft. That would be ideal because it protects basically the structure, the solar arrays from being damaged. We don't want to sink in, of course, and the worst environment we could find is a very rocky environment where we basically get caught in between stones. That would be a nightmare for Edifix to upright. And um, that is where JAXA comes into game because JAXA Sun will, together with Melko Sun, the scientists, the rover team, um, select the landing site. And um, that, that will help a lot to find what we wish for or not. Well, anyway, we have only one Edifix. So how to choose? The, uh, where we release and then the, uh, we land in the end. So that is the, the most the, uh, important point the, uh, of the operation I see. Definitely. And then there's another environment that is very um, important. Maybe Stefan, you want to give mention, uh, which is basically we need some energy. Yes, energy is very limited uh, on Phobos. And so it's why one of the challenge of the rover also to manage as much as possible the very limited power we have. So we will have to limit our operation on Phobos due to that, these constraints. Mm. So yes, it will be a big challenge during the operation for the team, which will be fully involved in during the 100 days of missions. Mm. So basically in, in the ideal world, we will land somewhere where we have a moderate influx of, of, uh, of um, sun. And in a nightmare world, we would be e either somewhere where it is too hot or somewhere where we don't have enough energy to heat up the rover in, anymore. So that is basically done by the uh, landing site selection that we do together. Phobos is the moon of the uh, Mars. So it is the outside of the Earth orbit from the sun. To get the energy in that far places anyway, it is difficult for the any the probes we are to operate. So some of the rovers operating on the Mars using the radioisotope generator uh, but we didn't use it to the, uh, use the solar panel to generate. So that limits the uh, uh, the power you can get in the Edifix. But on the other hand, the, uh, we can say that the, we use the green energy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the one thing you'd want them to know about the Edifix project? One message would be in particular that many things that you discover on Phobos or that we think we will discover on Phobos are counterintuitive. You cannot imagine what happens there. So for example, if you think about the rover, the rover is moving really slow. It's moving the speed of a, of a snail, more or less. But since the rover is 30 kilograms of mass, but the force that it, it, it exerts onto ground is like an envelope and will basically hardly have any contact with the, to, to the ground. So it will be rather flying than driving, even though it is slow like a snail. And in many, many places we have seen that uh, our intuition 
is not exactly what the rover will do on the surface and simulation has shown that and without simulation we would have run into the trap in multiple places. Technical point of view for the rover, I think in 25 kilograms we have everything to do, perform to drive, to have to navigation, to perform some science, to communicate, to have the power in just 25 kilograms. And it is very highly integrated. We have everything in a very limited mass budget. Definitely. This was a constant struggle <laughs> over the entire project. Yes. <laughs> we promised Kawakatsu-san that we will be in the mass limits and we are. What I want to say from the spacecraft side is to operate the multiple systems you know, on orbit is a very difficult and complicated things. That means that, that there are many unknown the possible the accident happens. If we find something anomaly, the, uh, we have to think about the, which part has a trouble and that causes us to make the solve, solving the problem much the, uh, difficult and we have to tackle it. So in the end, the, uh, to overcome those, the, we have to make the, uh, the preparation of the operation as well as the training of the operators. Do we want to check we actually yes. recorded something? <laughs> 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 we have to redo if you want. Nice rehearsal. <laughs> oh, yes.